Welcome back to User and I, the channel where I explore all things UX and UI design. And today I'm going to be answering an interesting question that was left on one of my previous YouTube videos. And that was, can you please show how we can change the padding without using auto layout? And I thought this would be a fun one to explore, but I thought the best way to do this is to compare it to adding padding using auto layout. So what we're going to do is create two artboards. And I'm going to rename that one with auto layout and without auto layout. Oh, typo there. So typically what we would do here when we're adding padding, as in the way I like to do it anyway, I would draw a rectangle in here and then I'd duplicate that for example and I'd make the frame an auto layout and as you can see we've already got padding right that's the quickest way I would do that and we can control it using these areas here we can drag on both of them and we can use independent court independent edges right so that's the way I would do it for one with auto layout but what if we wanted to do it without and I thought that'd be that, that's the most curious one right so I'm going to make this pink so we can see where the background is. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to press A and I'm going to create another frame within this one. And then I'm going to make that white. Now what we can then do is I'm going to center it just in the frame. And we can come down here and set the constraints to left and right and top and bottom. Now what that does is that it maintains the size of the rectangle or the shape in the middle exactly how we've drawn it but one thing to be aware you can change the width and the height of this and that will also stay the same so it's possible with auto layout as you can see down here and it's possible without i guess more questions come out of that because well what do we lose and what do we gain from creating an auto layout frame and not creating an auto layout frame first of all if we click on the frame we immediately see we get these hovered areas and that allows us to change the padding as we want if we click on it we can also just type in a figure and that changes automatically as we can see there now if we go up here we don't get those in any way shape or form so you wouldn't know how much the padding is on either, either side that's one thing you lose as well so really and truly both methods work really well it really does depend on what you would want to use instead of the other i would prefer with auto layout just because it allows me quicker ways to amend my layout especially with these quick fixes of changing the padding here and changing it down here so i would say this is a more manual way to change the padding because even if you wanted to change it all on one side you still can do that by just making it smaller and extending out so i guess it's up to you whether you would like to use with auto layout or without auto layout but there is one minor difference which is this area here that you lose and the settings down here i hope that helps and let me know what you think of the video